Hi, I'm Scientific Illustrator Stephanie Raza. Welcome to Nature Sketch Creates Okupi Go Out and Sketch instructional video. In this video, I'll be showing you how to sketch the Okupi by applying what you learned with your step-by-step -step lesson. You can follow along with this video even if you don't have the lesson kit. You can help out this tiny business by shopping for future creates at naturesketchcreate.com, clicking that like button, and subscribing to this YouTube channel. First, make sure you have all the materials you need before you go out to sketch. You can go out and sketch an okapi or something similar at a zoo or from an HD video at home. Today, I'm sketching from a composite video of an okapi for demonstrative purposes. Remember, this is just a sketch. It's meant to be fun and relaxing. Take your time observing nature, practicing painting, and don't get too caught up in accuracy. Let's get started. So use what you know from your step-by-step -step lesson in order to create the image of the yoga pee. And so first you want to think about how you want the okapi pee on your page, how big you want it to be and what position. And you want to start using some light marks to create a sketch of the okapi. pee. And you can do this by drawing simple shapes like circles, ovals, rectangles, triangles. And you'll want to use very light marks. And so in order to get the okapi on there, you can also use the negative space. The negative space is the space between different parts of the animal. First, I'll probably draw in a rectangle for the head area. And maybe it'd be a little bit bigger. And then a rectangle for the body area. Maybe a little bit smaller. The neck is really long. And so now I know the okapi is gonna fit in this space here. And next I will want to create this negative space. So the, this is where the leg is and this is where the neck would go to the head. So the bottom front leg is here. And there are two legs right there that kind of have a slight diagonal. And then there's another leg right behind it and another leg right behind it. Luckily this okapi isn't moving too much so it'll be a little easier to figure out where everything belongs. It's a composite video for demonstrative purposes as well. So you can see from the front leg there is a shape or an angle from this leg up to the head. So you can kind of add an angle and then there's a shape kind of here, here, and then down like that. And you can see that shape right underneath the okapi to help you figure out where the neck and the legs and how long they're all gonna, they're all gonna be. You can kind of base it by looking at this shape. So this angle, this angle, this angle, this angle, this angle. So it ends up being one single simple shape helping guide you. And you'll want to use light marks because these are just guide marks. And you can look at it a few times and look at the okapi to figure out if that's the right shape. And if the okapi is going to be the right size. And then you can take you can draw some more lines to guide you as far as where the neck goes. And you can draw in these, the outside of the other leg. Just a nice light sketch. So you have a little rectangle here for those. Give yourself more guidelines if needed. And, and then there's another negative shape in here. So we can draw that one in as well to give us a point of reference here. 
and these lines can all change a little bit so I'm drawing them in really light. So I'm trying to look at this negative shape here. Try to think about the size of this area and what this shape in here looks like rather than the okapi as a whole. And the hoof ends where the other hoof ends here. So it lines up for the most part. So I'm going to add that in there. It's a little more forward towards you, towards the viewer. And then there's another negative shape right here with the back leg. So to get the body the right dimensions, it might be helpful to put in that back leg negative shape too. So there's a little shape between the legs and this can all change a little bit. Don't worry about it. If it's not quite right, you can change it. Or maybe you want to practice this a few times. Um, you can get some regular paper and just practice sketching to get used to the animal a little bit to do a bunch of rough sketches. I actually did a few before doing this just to get to know the animal a little bit better. It's kind of like a warm up if you exercising, you know, you warm up a little bit. It's kind of the same thing. warmed up for this drawing by doing some really fast rough sketches, lots of lines like these and nothing more until I figured out the right method. I found that negative space method helps a lot with getting this animal onto the page correctly. And it's still, it's not gonna be perfect. This is just a sketch, it's just gonna be a representation of this animal. Still mapping in the different parts, some rough lines and simple shapes. And I'll adjust the body once I have everything on to make it a little bit more, um, maybe make these legs a little bit wider, make it a little more accurate before moving forward too much. But again, after adding the paint, just like with our step-by-step, -step, we'll add detail again. So you will have a chance to change things one more time. But if you're sketching from a live okapi rather than a video, that okapi might not be around too long. So you wanna to try to get the sketch in pretty quick once you start your final sketch. You can sketch the okapi a few times until you feel like you're ready to do the final sketch here, like I did. I'm going to adjust it a bit based on everything. Make sure that my size is fairly accurate and I can also add more lines. So if, if you see a line that might help you sizing like this line here, might help you figure out where things are and keep it closer to what it actually is in size and reality. And 
and start adding a few other lines to guide me. The position of this oak pea is a bit different from our step by step, so it did take me a little bit of practice before this final drawing to get it correct. So please, if you need to, take some time, do a bunch of sketches first to get used to the animal and get a little bit more accurate before you do your final on your watercolor paper. If you just do a bunch of rough sketches and really light rough sketches, eventually you'll get to a point that you like that will better represent the animal. Sometimes you need a little bit of a warm up. And I did, I needed a warm up with this one. raising this up a little bit so that it's in the right position or a better more accurate position um, this doesn't look quite right that's why the marks are light so then I use some darker marks to define it and get them more accurate I'm not going to erase that too much, but I'm going to use my kneaded eraser so I don't ruin my watercolor paper. The regular eraser can be too rough on the paper make it so that it doesn't behave the way it's supposed to. I can lighten all these marks if I want to. Again, you don't want to take too much time, so I'm trying not to work on it too long. And just leave it the way it is. Looks close enough there. And this is a sketch, so I'm not going to get too accurate as far as the placement of these stripes. Each okapi has some individual stripes. So if I get most of them in there, it'll be good. And mostly they start a little wide on this side and then get thinner as they go towards the belly. In general. So as long as you follow that pattern or just keep them thin all the way through, like you see here in the top, that'll be good enough to look like an okapi. Because again, we're doing a representation of this animal. It doesn't need to be exact. When you're out sketching an okapi, if you're doing it in person, it's going to be hard to get all these stripes in the exact right spot, unless the okapi is staying still for a really long time, which is also possible. And some of these stripes seem to be curving a little bit here with the shape of the leg here. So I'm going to right draw on that line to give myself base for where it's going to curve. It goes right down in here. And so when I get to that spot, I, I know that I need to twist my lines back around again. And not being super exact, just kind of getting some lines in there because I want to do this quickly. And I know okapis have 
lines that are different, so does, this doesn't have to be the same exact okapi, it just needs to be a representation of the okapi, so the lines don't have to be exactly right. And if I want to, I can use this white space around the edge to note that the lines and the stripes were not exactly the same for this particular okapi, and that I just kind of added them in quickly. Overall, that looks pretty good for now. And if you need to, you can protect your painting with any of your papers so you don't smudge the um, graphite. You can see that I've smudged a little bit with my hand. So, so I don't continue to smudge the graphite. I'm gonna put my paper down. I don't wanna cover up too much because I wanna use this to help me figure out how big this should be. And I want to make sure I get the head looking pretty good. And then I'm gonna look at it and think if this looks correct, just looking at it and then looking back, kind of like we did with flipping up and down, make sure you have all the lines. We're just gonna look at this and look back at the okapi and then look at this and look at the okapi just to see if everything looks in general about what it should. Overall, that looks good. It's not perfect, of course, it's just a sketch. It's gonna be imperfectly perfect. It's a good representation of the oak bee as a drawing. So I'm gonna go ahead and probably add a few lines to the neck. And then I'm gonna write in the common name and scientific name, just for consistency. Again, you can use this white space for any kind of observations you have, how you were feeling, anything you were thinking about this animal, maybe notes about your sketch itself or the process, the weather, anything you like. This is your journal. Make sure to make it your own. Again, I'm just adding the common name, a scientific name for consistency. And now I'll go ahead and move on to adding some paint. So I have my oak pea red brown, and I have the dark version of that, and the medium version of that, and then I want like a very wet light version. I'm gonna actually be right here. Make sure that's the right color. Good. So I'm going to use this middle color. Check it again. Looks good. Dab it off onto my towel. And then I'm going to add it in basically to these dark spaces. 
and it doesn't need to be exact. And I can do it similarly to how I added it in my step-by-step. -step. I also want to base it on the animal in front of you as well. And so I'm putting in the darker areas and leaving the light areas, including the stripes. So I'm added in these striped areas. Adding this into the darker areas, and I'm going to take the other slightly lighter version of this color and add a little bit more. And if you feel like it needs to be a little bit darker, you can go ahead and add that in at any time. And I'm not being super exact, this is just a sketch, just a representation of this animal, and it's going to be perfectly imperfect. And I think the the mistakes just make it a little more unique, a little more fun, stylized. So the paint doesn't need to be exactly inside the lines. You look at this animal, the paint colors kind of go bleed into the white areas anyway. This dark area, this dark color kind of mixes in. So don't be too worried about placement, it's just a sketch. I'm gonna clean off my brush and I'm gonna pick up that really light color, test it out again to see if it's still the right concentration, looks pretty good. And then I'm gonna add it to the lighter of the dark area. So there's some spaces that have some darkness to them, a little bit darker, but they're not this quite this dark and feel free to just add that right over the other color they're basically the same color just using something that's a little bit less pigment in it so just paint right over that it should have dried by now for the most part too so it shouldn't smudge it should just be easy just to paint right over and add a little bit to that, and I forgot to paint right up here. So I'll just add this in instead. I'll have more chances to add dark paint in. And I need a little bit more concentration, so I'll pick up some more. And overall, that works for the first layer of paint so that, that works out for the most part. So you can test that this is dry enough by kind of dabbing your finger here and the paint should feel dry. It doesn't have to be really super dry. We're not adding a lot of water to the paper, mostly paint pigment, so it shouldn't take very long to dry. So next you want to take the Oak Pea Umber. Test to make sure that's good. It doesn't look like it's dark enough. And so I might need to go ahead and mix that again. So I'm going to clean off my brush and mix that again. And that was one drop of the 21H sepia. Two drops of a 31H red oxide. And one drop of the 32H raw sienna. Mix that up. And I'm going to 
add just a tiny bit of water just so it moves well when I'm using it. I want to use the full concentration of this color though. So dab it off onto my towel and check it out. And it's moving nicely without feeling like it's getting caught on the paper. And it's still a really dark color compared to before. So I'm going to pick up a little bit of that, dab it off onto my towel. And then I'm going to go ahead and add it in to all the really dark areas like we did with our step-by-step. -step. But this time I'm going to look at my actual okapi that's in front of me this composite video that I've created. And if it's a little wet, and you can always dab it off onto your towel a little bit to increase the control of that paint. And I'm going to start in the darker area here and then start moving the paint into the lighter areas, letting my paint run out a little bit to get that shape. My, the paint will just gradually run out, leaving kind of a gradient there. And I'm going to do the same thing in the belly here. I'm going to add some paint in the dark area. And then as I see it starting to run out, I'll start painting into the lighter areas. Let's see, it starts to add a little bit of a gradient there with a little bit of a harder line this time, that's similar to our reference as well. And that there's a hard line there. Add it in the darker area first using that full concentrated color. those lighter areas or the, these are pretty dark stripes so I can add that all in there first and it seems to get a little bit lighter as we go down. You can always add more paint so to take it away. A little bit lighter here so I'm gonna add that paint in there. Now that it's run out of my brush a bit I'm gonna add it all the way up into the neck here. And while I'm at it, I'm going to add it here just for speed. I'm not being too carried away with being exact, just adding it in as I see it. Next, I'm going to add this kind of golden color 
And I could wait for this to dry a little bit more. It might be better. I'm gonna work over here where it is drying and add a little bit of this color. And I don't want it fully concentrated, so I'm gonna take it to the side with a little bit more water and test it out. That looks pretty good. So I'm gonna start here in the hind quarters. Just a little bit more. Test it out. Looks pretty good. And if it's not really showing up, I can always get a little bit more or add a few layers of the paint, color paint it in a few times. Always a little bit more. This is fairly dry now too. Like I said before, it should dry fairly fast. Just add it in there because it's looks pretty golden to me. Colors are blending a little bit, which is fine. And I'm just trying to get it done quickly. We're adding more to this because I want the other colors to stand out a little bit more and not blend together like the gold did with the brown. So most of this is dry, especially the, like the hindquarters and the face. The body's still drying a little bit, so I'll let that wait for that to dry. But I'll start on the other areas first. And you can see if you put a lot of water onto this page, it will buckle a little bit. And I think that that's fine. It's fine for me. If you want, you can tape down the edges to keep it from buckling onto a hard surface like your sketchbook. So you can tape it down on the edges of your sketchbook without the binding in there. And that'll keep it from buckling as much. And I'm gonna remix the OKB Deep Brown. I want a fully concentrated color here, and the last one wasn't so dark. So I'm gonna do one drop of the sepia and one drop of the red oxide. Adding a little bit of water to that. Testing it out, looks pretty good. And I want that full concentrated color and that's one of the reasons why I remixed it because I want it to be full concentration. Dab it off onto my towel a little bit. Pick up maybe a little more. And then I'll just be careful not to put my hand in the middle and it's already just about dry in the middle. So by the time I get there, that'll be super dry. And I'm just gonna add that throughout in the really dark areas again, uh, just to deepen that and give it some more definition like we did with our step-by-step. -step. So of course I'm looking at my OKP reference in my video, my composite video for that placement.
there. And then next I'm gonna add the red color. I'm gonna wanna well, let this dry again. So some of these spaces are dry already, but not enough that I really wanna work on it some more. So I'm gonna let it dry again. So now this is dry, I'm gonna add some of the Oak be red, it's just the red oxides. It's this color over here. Add some water to it, it's so might dry a bit. I don't want it, I'm kind of use a medium concentration of that color. It looks pretty good to me. And I'm just gonna add it to all the areas that I see that are red in my reference animal here. Just quite a bit. I'm not going to be exact again, just kind of adding it in wherever I think it might be. That looks pretty good, so I'm gonna let this dry, and then I'm going to add a one more paint color. So lastly, I'm gonna add the sepia on its own, and it didn't seem to be fully concentrated before, so I'm gonna just add a little bit more. It's just the one color, so I'm just adding it to the same spot it was before. Adding a little bit of water to it, and I'm gonna just add that in where I see it again on my oak piece. This is really, really dark. Preserving some of the other color underneath, of course. And my brush releases just a little bit of water naturally. And I want this to kind of create a gradient in here. So I'm gonna clean off my brush and take that clean wet brush to kind of create a little bit of a gradient in there with the wet paint. Just kind of pulling it through there a little bit. And the same with the belly a little bit. And I think I want to do something similar with the neck as well. So I'm going to add just a few dark spots. Clean off my brush. And then take some of that paint, not over the entire area, but just to select areas of the neck.
looks pretty good to me. Maybe a little tiny bit of one of these other colors. I'd like to get a little bit of this reddish color here. Revive it a little bit and add just a little, little line of it. And mostly this is dry, so it'll blend into the neck a little, but I kind of wanted that to happen, so I want that to kind of bleed down into the neck a little bit. And then same with the bottom here. Just adding just a little bit more paint. And you can add more paint and ink wherever you feel like you need it. So this needs a little bit more of this deeper red color, I think. Just threw out some spaces. And I kind of want it to bleed into these white areas, so I'm going to add it in and let it kind of bleed into those spots. And mix up a little bit. Not a lot, just a little. And I think I also want it to be right here. Just deepen this color a little bit. And lastly, probably the ears. that looks pretty good. Uh, this is just a sketch. I don't want to get too carried away with it. So next I will let this dry and I'll move on to adding some ink lines. So lastly I'm going to add some ink lines and I'm going to start like we do with our step by step with the smallest tip micron just redrawing and redefining the lines I did in the very beginning. So the sketch and so go ahead and go throughout and redraw and redefine the lines and say redefine your paint might have landed in somewhere slightly different or maybe you notice something about the animal and you want to change that now and you can do that by adding the lines in a slightly different place and this is meditative and relaxing so if you can put on a podcast or an audio book and relax maybe listen to some music and redraw those lines in and i'm not redrawing the stripes i'm going to leave those i don't think they need any additional ink lines i think they look good just kind of a messy paint lines Next, I'm going to move on to the 01 micron and I'm just going to redraw my lines. And this is optional. You can leave it in pencil or redraw the text that you wrote on the outside. I like adding it with the 01 micron and then a little bit more with the 08 micron. And then I'm just going to go throughout and add just some lines wherever I feel like there's some lighter, less detailed lines, um, things that I don't think are going to thicken up with the 01 micron. I'm not really seeing a lot. I think I kind of like the lines they are, maybe here in the face a little bit. I like the line thickness that there is from the 05. So lastly, I'm going to add some 08 micron lines. If I want to, I can always go back and add some of those thinner lines later on. Something I'm noticing that this back should be maybe a little bit lower, so I'm going to add this dark line in to kind of create that slightly lower back there. And 
try to get, add these in. But I want to add it a little thicker in some areas I can. But I don't want to add it around everywhere. I want to continue to have that line variation so it pops off the page. So some thinner and some thicker lines. So kind of just looking at my animal and thinking, okay, where are the hard lines? What do I need to redefine to make it a little bit more accurate? So now I'm done. Don't forget to use the white space to add any kind of observations, thoughts, feelings, anything you were observing about the animal or anything you thought about your painting process as well. Great job observing your world and keep practicing. Check out naturesketchcrate.com for future lesson crates and make sure to use the hashtag naturecreator to have it featured on our social media. If you have any questions you'd like to see a plant or animal featured in a future lesson, please let me know in the comments below. Thank you for joining me. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to this YouTube channel.